Let's get cracking. Welcome back, everybody, here to your coverage of the D2CL Snow 2 Champions League quarterfinal of the playoff, the winner of which, which will go up against Team Empire in the winner's bracket semi-final. I say winner's bracket, it's a single elimination, so there's no winner's bracket, there's no lower bracket, there's just winners here in this competition. Let's get ourselves into the draft. It's already underway for game number two. Uh, technically, it is game number three, but we're going to call it game number two of Cloud9 going up against Fnatic. The scores now level up at one apiece with one default win going the way of C9 and one superb well-earned victory going the way of Fnatic. Of course, I am not alone this evening. I am joined for now the second time because we can't say that we, we have to say the cherry has been popped now. We've cast together. I am joined by Luminous this evening, man. Welcome back for game two. I am gr happy to be back. And you were talking about the solo mid Naga Siren, and I think we're gonna see it here from Honey. And not only that, they like to actually pop No Tail on that disruptor. And I think I've seen a matchup where Noto actually finishes Acceptor and he just basically had the song to set him up and he just had the biggest uh, Disruptor Ultimate I've ever seen. So I think if the game lasts long enough, it'll get there. What do you think about Ember Spirit? Has, uh, we haven't seen that hero. I guess some teams first pick him as we see Cloud9 do here, but some teams just completely ignore him. What do you think about the hero and do you think he deserved the first pick? I, I don't know if he deserves the first pick or not, but it, I think it was more of a statement kind of pick up because Cloud9 play him a decent amount, especially for Sing Sing. And he does dish mm -hmm. out a lot of damage. I remember the first time I saw the Ember Spirit, it was a complete glass cannon. Like, a complete glass cannon. But you also knew that once you got that higher damage, you could win a fight before the fight even begun with the Ember Spirit. And I think that's normally just the, the feeling that Cloud9 try and get when they get the Ember Spirit. They try and win you from range. The downside I'm really seeing, though, is when you pick something like that up and then you, and then you go up against Naga and Disruptor, you know you can't win from range because the Naga will always beat you. The Nug will always beat you with her sleep. And then you got Disruptor is going to be glimpsing people in and out. So even the Clockwork's effectiveness is actually going to be quite low in this game. And if Fnatic, like, Pilot Eye is going to ban at all the combination areas. If that Darkseer doesn't get removed in this game, it's going to be chaos. It's going to yeah, be absolute chaos for Cloud9. They'll have no control whatsoever in this game. It's always very tough to go into these big AoE ultimates. And uh, I, I, one thing I want to point out is that both teams is really, really good against chasing. If you ever try to run against a Disruptor, well, you wouldn't live to tell the tale because he'll glimpse you back and you're dead. Same thing here for Ember Spirit. I mean, how OP is that sleight of fist chain combo? Sing Sing does it fairly well where he just, you know, stuns you at the middle of that sleight of fist and you will never run. And when you have Clockwork Vision as well as the hook to actually uh, kind of grab you away, so I feel like if you're trying to run away from the team fight, you're doing it wrong, man. You, you got to just take that team fight in the beginning and win it hard. And so far, with the better team fight lineup the Fnatic has, I think they have the edge there. Really smart bands by Pilot Eye. Just going to throw it out there. Insanely smart bands. They've seen this Fnatic lineup before. I remember I was actually casting with Cap just the other day, and the second he saw the Niagara and Disrupt, he's like, dude, I saw this. I saw this during like a JDL game, and it was awesome. It was Niagara, it was Disruptor, it was Darkseer, it was Enigma, and it was just messy. Uh, like, and yeah. Cloud9 had done their homework on this one. Cloud9 had done their homework perfectly on this one. I'm wondering how Fnatic try and combo this now. Like, if they, they could even abandon it. Like, there's no reason why you can't just throw ear on the Naga, and they completely change it up. Like, this is something the Fnatic likes do a lot too. We, we throw the Lycan in here. We're not really looking at like mass team fights when you throw a Lycan in unless you're thinking about the wolf that just picks off the, the, the lost sheep. But like Fnatic, they've got so many options with their lineup right now. And because of their history, because of the other drafts they've done in the past, it's quite possible they just took Cloud9 for a bit of a spin with their two bands. Because yeah, how, how many teams have banned Enigma and Darks here in the second two? Exactly. I think if you get two bands out of that, you're already doing something correct on your draft. And all you really need is like one other AoE here, whether it's like a Crystal Maiden to just provide a little bit of AoE support. I think it, that's enough, right? You don't need to get a five man Disruptor ult. If you get two or three, you say, hey, that's a that's a pretty victory, good victory. You could get a Puck and that, you know, give you good laning in addition to that team fight. But uh, I haven't seen Hani play Puck and I imagine this, this, this uh, solo mid is going to be Naga Siren. So we'll see. Uh, it, I, I'm, I'm going to reserve judgment. I'm going to reserve judgment for now, just knowing how sly Fnatic can be. But yeah, considering I called it during game number one, I should probably be sticking by that, shouldn't I? Either way, uh, Chen and Urshaker have been removed out by Fly, so he's worried about the same ability that can also come out from Cloud9. Maybe the possibility of pullback. That Urshaker, I, I, I was kind of hoping to see Hani play it again today. I was just hoping because I, I, I was jealous of Cinderin and Suns fan when they got to cast that game. 
Yeah, I, I did not catch that game, but I saw the end game score, and he was looking ridiculous. Yeah, it was like refresher orb, and then people were like, "Man, why would you get refresher orb as opposed to getting something like, uh, li like, uh, like, um, oh, what, Aghanim Scepter?" And why would you? Why'd you ask that? It's just double dunk. Yeah, that's basically yeah. it. It was the full on dunking. Speaking of dunking, where's our axe? Where is our axe? We're gonna get a Vengeful Spirit from Fnatic. Yeah, they're, they're switched this around now, possibly, but it's still Disruptor and Vengeful Spirit. These two could just work together with the Lycan on the top and Force down the lanes. And Naga could be in the middle lane. Actually, it's kind of got to be that, doesn't it? Ir Ira's got to take that Lycan north. Are they, are they picking the Venge just for their aura? I'm, I'm confused to what this Venge is about, because if they're trying to rely on the Minus Armor, Dazzle's got you beat on that by a far mile with Weave. Um, Magic Missile, I think there's other better support with Suns. I guess Swap is something as well, but Swap generally isn't too effective because how low level Ventral Spirit tend to be. So I'm just really curious what this, this Venge pick is supposed this, to be. This feels like an aggro try. Just, just the feeling of it right now. Like it feels like Lycan on the top lane up against the Clockwork, and Naga in the middle lane, and then Disruptor VS plus one down on the south lane. And this could be Mirana, it could be anything along these lines. What I'm, it's in my mind, what I'm currently considering. It could okay. also be for level one Roshan. Uh, That's true. Another thing to just take into account, considering Fnatic, Fnatic are over on the Dire side. Ten seconds remaining. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you as well. Like, they're not going to win the Aura game uh, right now, considering you've got Lunar and Dazzle. But then again, do they? Like when you got Hal plus the VS buff up in the later portion of the game, you get another yeah. hero like an Invoker who can then summon up the Necro units. You can even put Naga then into an aggro try. Yeah, so I mean, put, you gotta keep Naga in mind that the uh, Exhort Invoker. Oh, yeah, go on. The, the, the Vlads from Lycan that he's gonna get gives you aura. You gotta keep in mind the Necro book that he's gonna get is gonna give you more aura. If he ever gets to AC, that's even more aura. So that's. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm following the aura strat. It gets a little bit there. If they want to go for a beast master, they need off lane hero. They're a dire. You know, that's he's pretty good there. I don't know if Trixie plays a beast master. I haven't seen him done it. I been a while. Honey, Honey is their beast master player. Okay. If anyone what about out Doom? Fnatic. Doom gets a ton of auras if he you know packs the the correct alpha wolf creep if but, he wants to go that way. But then you got to find a lane for him. If they're gonna do that, then Naga must be in the aggro try. And, 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 I, let, and let me just stream, man. Let me just stack up all the auras. <laughs> Just th think about everything you possibly could. Yeah, I had one ability draft game where I pick all the auras. I'm like, guys, I'm a, I'm a one-man team. <laughs> and uh, that didn't go so well. I, I still love that uh, the Clockwork video that came up recently for ability draft. It was Meepo, oh, me 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 Meepo Ulti, and he had, oh, cri yeah. he had Crypt Swarm, Soul Assumption, and Rockets. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was possibly the most douchebaggery build you could ever make on a hero in ability draft. It was wonderful. It's almost as bad as Searing Arrows and any melee hero. Seriously, that kind of crap should be banned. You mean the orb effect? I, I, I'm always like hesitant to draft that because in the back of my mind, it's like that should not work, right? Like, yeah. I have a Sven that's just hitting at 600 range. What's going on, guys? I'm so confused. Most of it's just a surprise. It's just a su surprise factor. Like, yep. you're sitting there and all of a sudden, just like, why am I taking so much damage? I'm not near. Wait, what the hell is. Who has got Searing Arrows here? <laughs> and then by the time you work it out, you're dead. Yeah. Yeah, the bad, the whole, the worst, worst problem of uh, of ability drop, but they are other you know, problems. That's actually a very poetic way to talk about that last game. By the time that Cloud9 walked, worked out what happened, they're dead. Like the, the two parts <laughs> came in, their throne was down, the, all the Raxes are down, and it's gonna be a lich for Fnatic. Yeah, this is well, that throws out our aggro tri lane to a point. But are they running two one two here? What's the, going on? This has to be lich core. It has to be Lich Core. Oh, actually, no, it doesn't. It can be VS Core. You could do Venge Core, yeah. Uh, the, the recent MYM team has been uh, playing Venge Core quite a bit. Well, I, was... I know Cloud9 also have experience with it too, because like you, you ran like, um, like Eternal Envy used to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was VS telling me Core. the other day when the, the new Venge set came out. I'm not sure if you have that set. It looks amazing, by the way. And uh, I, I'm too busy he's... working on my draw set, so she looks too amazing. Too. Sorry. Okay. All right. So, so <laughs> Venge looks amazing. He was telling me that he had a strat with a carry Venge, and they went four and one. I was like, why don't you play anymore? That's very successful. And then he said that in that one game that they lost, they lost so badly that they never want to play carry Venge again. So <laughs> it's gonna be support Venge from Fly here today. Yeah, but the question is now laning, laning. Do you just leave Lich on the off lane? Remember when uh, when Lich ulti first got buffed up? 
And it's like a huge amount of bounces straight from level one. And we saw this like insurgence of Lich solo offlane. Get the level six fast and then try and take team Ten fights. I kind of feel it's going to be the same thing here. Because you can have no tell with his wall, Five with his ultimate, then a Lich ultimate bouncing around. You can't run away. And it can all be set up by the Naga Sleep, which you're yep. going to get very early on the, in the piece because you're going to have, obviously, like him as a mid solo. So Not only that, you're going to get a quick mech, which goes back to the more aura strat for Fnatic because one thing that we kind of forget is that Lich offlane, not only is he going to be sapping experience, he's going to be getting a ton of farm. Unless we're going to see AEI as well as Fly zone him out. And speaking of which, Cloud9, would, I think they're checking for that Roshan right now. Would you still put mech on Hardy? Because, like, okay, what's your opinion right now of, of running both bottle and mech on your mid support hero? I say mid support hero because they end up putting a support role. Wait, wait, wait. Who, who's who's ha Hani's bottle rushing? He's the mid solo. Yeah, yeah. He's not gonna get a mech, right? Well, yeah. That, that that was my question. Like, who would be the one to get the mech? What's your opinion? Uh, it's definitely Lich, right? He he's gonna be yeah. there to farm that quick mech. Um, I imagine Hani's gonna be going for that Arteezy Naga build where you go for the quick bottle and the drums, and then you just go for a radiance rush. And once you get the radiance, God help C9 because I don't know what you deal with that. <laughs> But you can't deal with Radiance, and then you're gonna have the buff up from Ear coming in with then so you have his little army of wolves hunting you. Not to mention, uh actually mechanic question, because you know I, I absolutely suck at this one. Is there any buff that's transferred over to the mirror images from the HAL? Yes, they do get the uh they do get buff. But not exactly the full buff. If you click on HAL, it gives you like the hero gets a, a certain amount of damage, and then the minion gets damage. I but believe they, they get count the as minion minions? damage. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. We'll, we'll see. Uh, it's going to happen sometime this game, and we'll get to click on it. Oh. So this, this is why I like bringing in co casters who have sound mechanical knowledge. Well, no, I mean, I, I, I don't know either. I'm just saying, we'll see. <laughs> wait, so, wait, no. Literally, literally, they can't be right. They can it. Like, what happened? What happened? I think you got to start bringing back your trivia shows. Oh, man, I love those. Uh, I I remember I, I I wanted to learn so much from those too. Like I tuned in for your first I episode. You joined, you yeah. joined one. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah, I, I came in. I, I got three questions right, and then I was just like, yes, end of the night. Yes, <laughs> I don't fail completely. That this middle lane man, ha <laughs> Honey is not going to get in close at all. Sing Sing, he's got free farm here, and now he two thousand just with poison is keeping Honey at bay. Yeah, I mean, they have to win the top lane very hard, but it's really hard to go against Clockwork. They do drop a kinetic field on but he just... <laughs> he just walked out, okay. Hey, he wasn't caught in it. He was on the, he was on the rim. The way I'm seeing it, Cloud9's winning all three lanes. Yeah, great. Cl like, Clockwork just hit level 2 by one minute in. This is already a massive problem for Fnatic. And then on bottom lane, like, Lich is keeping the creep way back, but you're still getting Envy. Getting some good farm, even though he's losing a couple of creeps here. The momentum's going to be controlled by Pilot Ice pull through. They just did them. And then middle lane, Hani is still sitting at 1 for 0 now. And his bottle won't arrive for a little bit. And he can't really do much about it until, yeah, now he is level 2. So at least he's got mirror images with Riptide. But he doesn't have a mana pool supported until that bottle has arrived. Yeah, so Sing Sing's going to be going for a build that he personally really loves, which is Max Searing Chains and Max Slide of Fist. Uh, you don't get the flame guard, but what you do get is a, a lot more mobility and a lot more kind of damage initiation. So I think he's going to be looking to gank a lot once he gets to level 6. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like Hani, this is what Hani likes to do a lot when he's playing mid. And for example, he gets really shut down as you go in the jungle and you keep stacking the camps. Because you know eventually you're going to go back and, and clear those camps for big Iggy's P and gold. Hmm. You should also keep your eyes peeled on bottom lane. Trixie's doing a lot of harassment damage to Luna. But now he's coming in through the rear. Uh, Trixie has been slightly over aggressive on this bottle lane. Ever since he at level 3 and he put the two points up into the Frost Blast, he knows he's got the damage advantage. And, and you should notice this. There's a ward down. Yeah. yeah. He's but back it up. <laughs> he's uh, taking a ton of tower down, just running past. Okay. He's got a haste through, man. This guy has no fear. Problem is, though, if he got Frost Blasted up at level 2 just then, there was no haste rune or it's hard to wear off, he'll be dead. Yeah, I think right now you can see Envy's trying his best to push the lane, and if you could pincer the Lich, uh, oh, Lich is going to get lifted, he's going to get tossed back, here comes a Poison Touch, where's the Nova Beams, it's going to come through, he oh, look at him. to get the blast off, but too late. He thought for a moment he could pick up Eternal Envy, because Envy was taking up tower damage and he was coming in trying to snipe out the last hit with like a Lucent Beam or something, but... So he thought if he turned for the two points frost blast, he could actually get himself a collateral kill on Envy, which would make that completely worth it. Yeah, I mean, he would have got the first blood too, right? If he, he got the kill first. Yep. Yeah. 
Well, right now, the lane that Fnatic's supposed to be winning is, is the Lich lane. They've lost that. Mid is going horrible as Hanis continue to do bottle crawling as well as stacking. And Tom, well, Bone7's bon got a ton of levels. So he's doing quite all right as well. Yeah, so, so far, so good as far as Cloud9 goes. I still don't want to count the bottom lane as one yet. Because for me, the levels are the more important thing. It's like watching watching your off laners, and you always say, as long as you don't die too much, you're going to be okay. But Trixie's sitting up here at level 4. Like, there's no problem for him. He's finding his level 6 up and running uh, quickly. Hani is, like, he's had to go jungle, which obviously isn't a great thing. They've abandoned the middle lane. Um, that's a really, really bad thing. And Trixie actually may be dead now. Um, Telekinesis, there's not enough mana. He's short by 10 mana. Oh, that Luna's running in, though. He's moving fast. No, I don't Give think it's fast theme. enough now. Oh. It is. What kind of range is that? All right, Toby. That's, so not, let me that's not legit range, man. That's not legit range. Like, Envy, where he's standing right now, that's yeah. where he can hit, and this is where he is standing. And he hit, like, over here. It's just ridiculous. Clockwork also just went down, but that was a Fnatic kill. So it was the two supports teaming up and they managed to pick off the off laner. So now that they got an extra kill, do you think they won the lane? And now they're pressuring the tier 1 tower as well. I, I think it's not looking good for Fnatic down here. I, I'm still going to reserve my judgment until the first initiation from Fnatic. Then, like, like as far as the early lanes go, this is okay. But if it doesn't transition to bringing down a tier 2 tower, then I'm not considering this a win, like a one lane. Because it okay. just means you just back someone else up. If Ligon's having a rough time on top, push him towards the bottom lane. He'll farm up safely underneath this tier 2 tower. So normally when a, when a team kind of push down a tier 1 tower, they, they just back off. And that really allows the off lane to get more experience. But Trixie, he just has no room. The tier 2's now in the um, siege. They're coming in. No tails coming in through the rear right now. He's backing up though. They're really not sure about this because they lost vision of the C9 players. So they thought for a moment they might try and rotate back over past the bottom rune. I mean, normally for C9, it's very dangerous to do the oh, same kind of thing. Goes oh. on no tail. Huge damage straight away. He is, however, his Nan and Riptide up next to the next to the tower. And he got held in by the kinetic field. And oh. the tower oh. tagged the bottle. And then the heal. He gets a quick chains off on Hani, who will break for you now with the mirror images. But Sing Sing barely staying alive in the middle lane, but gets away with murder. Wow. That was so close, because with the minus armor, with the Riptide, the tower is going to kill him. But the heal came, the bottle charge came, and it didn't look too good. That was tough. Looked like overcommitment, but then all of a sudden, awesomeness. Yeah. I mean, again, Cloud9 could just pressure as much as they want on the bottom lane. Because normally, you'll be afraid of a puck rotation, right? You'll be afraid of a puck rotation. But this Naga's level 5, and she really can't initiate on anything until she's got that song. So yeah. right now, Cloud9 could do whatever they want, including diving in mid-tier 1 tower, just like that, and not get punished for it. This, this is the biggest problem, man. Once Hani is level 6, and it's going to get a lot better for Fnatic, which is, again, why I'm still reserving my judgment on who has really won this early game yet, uh, because Roshan's also going to be available with sure. a Vladimir's yeah, offering. Like, like Ira's going to get it with his last creep now. So Vlad's is up 6.5 minutes into the game. That's a very impressive farm. No. As he's 43 for 15. He is completely outstripping Eternal Envy as far as farm goes. And this is where I, I normally have my concern. I remember when I used to cast a lot with Puppy before he was, uh, he, well, got a little bit bored by it all. Uh, the, uh, the thing which he always said was, you take out a tier 1 tower, what good does it do? Well, you it does this. Sing Sing rushes <laughs> in and just... I don't think if, if there was a tier 1, a tier 2, and a tier 3 tower, Sing Sing would have still gone for exactly the yeah, same bloody true. thing. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> true. Yeah, th but the, the thing you always said was like, where do you go from there? Like you take out a tier 1, you take out a tier 2 tower, and then you have players like, well, Black used to do, which is like, sit back next to his tier 3 towers and anti mage, and he never let the creep wave go more than 10 meters. He would control it the entire time, and you're like, well, what am I supposed to do? I can't push high ground, and technically I can't be up that far because I'm just too deep into enemy territory. Well, I don't think C9 is actually stopping any aggression. They push down tier 2. They'll lose uh, their tier 1 on top, though. They do, they do. And I, I think it actually this hurts them a little bit more. Sure, it's a tier 2 for a tier 1 trade, but these heroes really need to go, right? Like, Hani on the mid lane has no farm, so that tower helps him a lot. And of course, that Trixie, he has no farm whatsoever, and that helps him as well. Actually, Trixie does have a triangle creeps. I'm not sure how he conjured that up, but that's that's good, I guess. He's, he's got what he needs, man. And you, is this, this is my point right now. See how they have to leave Hani alone? And Hani gets a ton of room to get that farm, yeah. Bingo. And this was my point. No tell, however, this doesn't really help the case for Fnatic. When Ember Spirit now goes three for zero. 
and now look to bring down the tier 1 tap. Th this is where it starts to hurt. Like, you're taking the tier 1, tier 2 tower in the bottom lane. If they lose their tier 1 tower in the middle lane too, Fnatic's quick movement in to try and protect it, uh, protect Roshan or to bring down Roshan just doesn't exist anymore. And that's when C9 start getting advantage from bringing down these towers. Yep. And uh, you can see that Era, he is going to go for the Medallion. Generally, you go for the Medallion if you want to go for the quick Roshan. And they probably need something to, to like, smoke into it to catch C9 undetected. But guess what? You know, Bone's already on top of it, checking it with rockets. Yep. So I think Fnatic's going to have a very tough time. They definitely need their level 6s, like you pointed out. They need a Song. They need the Disruptor ult. They need a Chain Frost. And so far, uh, no tells level 4. Yeah, this is... <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure what he's supposed to do as well here. Like, he's going to do a pull down, but there's only one hell bear, which he's got to play around with. He tried to take the damage. He, he, uh, it's, it's a little bit too... I hate those pulls on, on camps now. It makes life so much more difficult. But this is actually like the, the uh, point I was making on the bottom lane. is now kicking in on the top lane. Bone 7 is getting free space to farm up. He's rocketing towards the mid lane. Trixie. Well, oh. in comes the rocket. 19 life points, he popped the one charge, but the Naga Sleep has now been used offensively. Supports Sing -sing. on the way in, fly with a Howl of Terror, but Sing Sing, you're right, he's chasing down, he's looking for Trixie. Trixie hides in the Roche Pit, he'll TP out while Pylite die. The Shallow Grave is keeping him up for now, it's a wonderful Searing Chains. Notar burns inside of the restraints, and Era is backing up. His ulti form is gone too. C9, they've got perfect control of this game right now. They'll take the tier one tower in the mid, and Fnatic cannot fight. They've expended everything they had apart from Lich ulti, because he had to bail. And Sing Sing is just really showing why this build is one of his favorite builds. It's so powerful in chasing, it's so powerful in terms of damage output, and he is single-handedly zoning away the entire team. You get close, and you, that happens to you. You just see a little bit of damage. Look at Notel, he teleported in and lost 300 HP. He has to go back to well now. <laughs> there's, there's just nothing more you can do about it. But look at what Sing Sing's also doing. You, you, keep, you keep one of your spirits in the middle lane. And you just wait for someone, someone to come down. Look at Trixie. He can't come here because there's a spirit. <laughs> he actually cannot come here because there is a spirit watching him. He's this good. is not a uh, memorial for the dying oh. Ember spirit. This he is, is very, <laughs> very alive. This is ballsy from Fnatic. This is really, really ballsy. Without Naga Sleep, they were going uh -oh. in for Roshan, and the rocket's uh -oh. on the way in. And Spirit as well, Sing Sing. This could be a massacre. Fly, already under 250 live points. Nero got bashed up by Roshan. He had to stick around a little bit longer, and Sing Sing is going to fist up again, searching for another hit. If he got the chains off as well on Fly, he would have had himself a kill. Yeah, had cool down there. I mean, they had to go uh, for that kind of risky play. It didn't pay out there, but... uh Envy's going to steal it. I don't think they have enough damage. They think... had the Wolves to actually give sight as well. I think this is actually a little bit greedy for Cloud9. Mm. It could really hurt him, but look at Bone 7. He's sitting in a position where he can just cog the... Uh, Cog the choke point. Yeah, he has hook as well. He uh, no tail. Gotta be careful. Still level Rocket. four. Saw him. Does he jump? He jump. Oh. That's a little middle. It went that thing. away. We'll just defend him. We'll take Roshan. Yeah. Plan for C9 now. Uh, <laughs> the wolves are coming in, and maybe they can get a wall up. The wall is nice, but Sing Sing in through the rear. He just fists the entire Fnatic lineup. Coming down. Trixie's only at least will bounce around nicely. Back over to Pilot Eye, but the wolves are in back. What the hell? Like, that was Wait. a Rubik stall. That was a Rubik uh, stall. He stole Chain Frost and was bouncing around top of the wolves. Fnatic had to come back. I didn't even see the Lich only for Fnatic, but the one from C9 was more effective. <laughs> oh my god, and now Kyle Nine's gonna back up, but there's a glimpse, Ooh. and Bolt 7 has a blame out, so nobody can attack him. <laughs> the support gets driven away, and this Rocket Flare no is hurting so much. No Tail is going back to base. I think No Tail has gone back to the base more times than he has actually seen a creep kill mm -hmm. for himself. Watch the time. Uh, I think he'd be able to heal up in time before that level 3 rock will be able to reach him. He'll be fine. He has rock, he has a magic stick as well. But this yeah. this tier 2 tower is not going to be fine. Oh. This is this is dominance. From what happened in game number 1 to now in game number 2, I don't think many people would have been expecting that. But with 7,000 gold advantage in favor for C9, and about 8,500 gold also going the way of Cloud9, they're just they're looking perfect right now. Absolutely perfect. They get their secondary drums. We've got one for Luna, we've got one for Sing Sing, we've got kills also coming the way of Sing Sing. If he doesn't die right now, he's going to make us see more though, so who cares? Clockwork hooks in, and he caught Fly out. Rubik with the telekinesis, just even holding him in, like, obviously the cogs weren't enough. The Sing Sing will now go back to base, TPing out, and he'll come back with full Rocket, life again. Rocket, Trixie! Oh, okay, he did not go for Trixie. <laughs> It's like he was trying to hit No-Tail instead. It's still ridiculous, man. I don't know if, if this is what we can call OP. But the ability to take a fight like that, drop down to low, low life, 
TP back to base and then straight back to your spirit. It is actually pretty OP, not gonna lie. One of the things that a lot of pro players have been speaking of, if, if you gank a regular hero, like for example, if uh, Envy gets ganked right now, if he doesn't die, he's at least forced back to, t to TP, right? He's going to lose time. Yep. For Ember Spirit, if he gets ganked or if he, his gank fails, it doesn't matter. He leaves his spirit, TPs back home, and he's right back in the field again. That is that is insane. I'd almost like to add, I don't know how, how it can be perfectly balanced unless you keep like a range limitation on it uh, sure. or, yeah. a t or a time limitation. Or you could do, like, uh, the further you are away, the more mana it costs. Yeah, that'd Maybe be nice. So, so you actually lose mana when you come back in, but no tell, he'll lose his life. Uh, like, the wall's coming down, sing, sing. <laughs> That's a level 4 Fade Ball Default, and if really, if worse came to worse, then they've still got the Chain Frost left over here on Pile I Die. It's only got like another 10 seconds on it, and that's why he's TPing in. Unfortunately, he was the second one to come in. Trixie and Era, Sing Sing, the Agency one will trick you here. Pile and I move up, look for something to ulti. Actually, no. Oh, oh no. it's a trap. The wolves are in, and they're taking up a lot of the damage, but Sing Sing gets rid of one. The spirit comes in, they see Era, but they couldn't see him just enough time to get that loser beam off from Eternal Envy. And the Lich ulti is now lost for Pile and I. Sadness. Yeah. Again, Pilot Knight still has a better chain than uh, than Trixie has so far. Pilot. If the game ended right now, Pilot Knight better Lich. What did that chain do from Trixie, by the way? I, I don't know. I didn't I, even see did it. Neither did I. Did, did it like, hit, did even hit something? <laughs> I'm sure it hit something because he casted it. So uh, I could disjoint on the first. <laughs> oh my god. If you look at Rubik, Pi's almost got Blink Dagger. Like, yep. these supports are so rich, except the wolves are kind of eating him. Run Pi. If only they had something which had like a global ability to kill. Dyer's top tower is under These attack. wolves aren't mean bastards though. Oh no, Fly gets caught in his own jungle. I mean, when C9 has wards in your jungle like that, and your supports can't do anything, they can't even walk to the tier 1 tower up top. No. Nope. I'm surprised that tier 1's still alive. It's just because C9 have had other priorities. Like, they've taken yeah. out tier 1, tier 2 towers on the mid and the bottom. They've completely shut down the Roshan pit. For Fnatic to jump into, which was like meant to be their biggest advantage. You pick up a Lycan in this stage, you want to be inside of Roshan. But Fnatic, they're so scared to move out. It's 12 for 1, man. It's 12 for 1 in favor of Cloud9. You'd yeah. be scared to move past your tier 3 towers right now. I mean, and Pilot fair, I just they, now they, just got wolves to attack back. Well, at least Scout. I mean, that's <laughs> like moving wards for free. <laughs> Better than any support could ever buy. Like, yeah. look at this. Where's the split, man? I, yeah, come on. If, if this was like Ice Ice Ice, we'd have one wolf in every single camp. That's true. Pilot died, not Asian. Confirmed. <laughs> oh, man. Actually, he heard you. He, he split them. He's using move command. <laughs> uh, either way, they're attacking on no tower now. Bringing down a half life. There you go to tier 1 tower on top lane. Uh, Battle Fury is on the way as well for Sing Sing. I guess not coming out in the Courier, but he's just got the two damage healing items left to do now, so only 1,500 gold. I say only 1,500 gold for the raid the Sing Sing's been farming and the fact they're going to bring down this tier 2 tower on the top lane as well, because Fnatic won't defend it, they can't. Uh, this Battle Fury is going to arrive by 18, 19 minutes into the game. Okay, so for uh, Fnatic fans out there, I think one way that Fnatic could win the game, and I think that, that looks pretty bad at 12 to 1 and everything, is somehow Hani conjures up a Radiance. If that happens, they have a shot. But, See, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd go on the different lines here, man. Because they finally have Disruptor ulti, all I'm okay, saying is... Okay, you go is, for the Wombo combo. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm talking Wombo combo here. So we go Naga Sleep, five man caught in the wall from Disruptor, because there's still no BKBs to break them free of this. Uh, and then Lycan comes in, massive shapeshift form, the walls bring Sing down, like Sing Sing yeah. straight away. You got the three points up in the wave of terror, so you got your negative armor from that. And then the Lich ulti hits on nothing but heroes. Okay, nothing so but me, heroes. If you don't ever become a uh, Dota caster, you could be a writer, because your, your writing skills, your fictional writing skills are pretty good. Creative imagination. Unfortunately, it's a fantasy novel. It's a fantasy novel. <laughs> have, you, have you watched that Dream League game where Cloud9 <laughs> Had the most amazing five-man vacuum into uh, Echo Slam, but didn't kill anybody? No, I hadn't seen that one. Well, they were down by like 20 kills on that game, and they, they finally <laughs> execute the most perfect combo, but it just didn't do jack. So, I mean, I at, at some point, a level disadvantage. Was, was that a Dream League game? Because I remember having the exact same moment. It was Bone7, who did it on top of the Tier 1 tower on the top lane. 
Maybe it's just a Cloud9 thing where it's just yeah, it's... so hard and, and just wombo but doesn't combo, you know? Uh, I, I remember an exact moment like that. It was it, it was like 30 minutes into a game. They had won absolutely nothing the entire time. I actually think it was up against Team Empire as well. And then, yeah, just that jump in from Bone7. He hit five people in with a Dream Coil. He drops another 100 life points. And then Mech kicks in. And there's his other heals kicking in. And they got absolutely nothing and lost their entire team called GG. Yeah. And speaking of Meg, actually, actually, got actually, one. yeah, because it's a highlight video over on Join Dota about it. Yeah, yeah, I, okay. I actually cast that. <laughs> I like how Cloud9 has these highlights where they execute a good combo but lose this game. <laughs> oh, fine. I mean, <laughs> that's a one shot. Exactly. And even how? the what burn do you do? after. Do back in? What is what? that? <laughs> oh, wait, what? <laughs> he got glimpsed back in, but he just like flame spirit out. Oh, fly. Oh, he he's dead. Damage. <laughs> Loose and beam from Luna kill secures. Okay, okay they've got three Good heroes up. here. The wall will only be able to count off two. No tell. Wall. Ulti. Now it comes down. Trixie throws the ulti out. It's only on Envy as well as... Okay, it's going to come back up to Bone 7. But there's four heroes on the sideline for Fnatic. They can't repel firepower of that magnitude. And Sing Sing's in there. It's basically Spirit versus Wolf. And I hate to say it, but the Wolf does not win in this fight. Especially when his shape his shapeshift form ends. They don't lose a single hero, and they will take top racks. And in under 20 minutes, I would not be surprised if the GG call comes up from Fnatic. I mean, that was a perfectly executed combo. I guess they lost a Venge beforehand, so they missed out a little bit of tier action. But yeah, there you go. They just yep. could not have enough damage output against a mech from AI. Uh, crazy, crazy play coming out from C9. Just such domination. Like to we got quick games today. Yeah. I just can't believe they came back from game number one. Like, game number one, at the end of it all, you've got to be sitting there going, I hate you from my right, I hate you from my left, and I hate you from my mid. And then they come back in this game, and they just shut down everybody. And I think now we can say, while well, the game is over, they won their lanes, Lumi. They did. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you agree with me. <laughs> I'm like, all right, tier one went down, Lich died twice. Have they wandered late? And Toby's like, nah, no. Nah. Wait for the team fight. Nah. Wait for the team fight, man. Ever the optimist. <laughs> Ever the realist, man. Ever the realist. <laughs> you got to have a balance with your casters. All right, people, stay tuned. We'll see if we can blend optimism as well as realism to give us ourselves a close game for game number three tonight. It is now a 2-1 advantage going the way of Cloud9. If they win this game, they have themselves a date with Team Empire in the semifinals. Stay tuned and we'll be back here in a couple of moments' time to see if Cloud9 can go, I'd say, almost straight through. We'll find out together. Stay tuned.